If you're scrolling through Netflix, you'll probably notice that there are a lot of cooking and baking shows. This is no mere coincidence. Back in July of 2010, MasterChef aired on Fox and it was a huge hit. It is still airing to this day with 10 seasons under its belt. When you think of a cooking show, this is most likely the first one that comes to mind. However, I'm going to be focusing on another newer cooking series, The Great Canadian Baking Show, which began airing in November of 2017 and now has three seasons with its fourth coming in 2021. Now you may be wondering why would I pick a series with so much less content to analyze. For one, I don't want to listen to Gordon Ramsay yelling at contestants for 42 minutes each episode, and two, I've watched quite a bit of MasterChef and I feel like it's fallen into a formulaic structure, so I want to see if the great Canadian baking show can break that formula and stand apart from its competition. Now, typically when you think of Canadians, you think of kind, giving, and helpful people. However, when you're in a competitive space, everyone becomes cutthroat to each other, right? Well, surprisingly, no. This series really leans into Canadian stereotypes and gives you a warm and comforting show where it doesn't necessarily feel like the contestants are competing with each other and instead just growing their own individual skills throughout the competition. To get started, I'm going to be analyzing the structure of an episode, but first I'm going to introduce you to the judges and hosts of the show. I'll be analyzing episodes from season 2 where the judges consist of Bruno Feldesini and Rochelle Adonis. The two most unique aspects of these judges are the fact that unlike other judges, they will not utterly destroy your self-esteem. Then the hosts for this season include Daniel Levy from the hit comedy series Schitt's Creek and Julia Chan from the series Saving Hope. On the other hand, something worth mentioning about these two hosts is that in an interview they were both asked, what the heck do you people know about baking? And this is what they had to say. Zero. That's why I'm here. I know how to make a very plain sponge. Hmm, well, at least it seems like CBC is proud of this because they also named the interview video Great Canadian Baking Show's hosts know nothing about baking. Moving on, each episode begins with a cold opening sequence that features Daniel and Julia performing a sketch. Even though I feel like I should be cringing at these openings, I can't help but smile. These cold openings do a fantastic job of setting the light and fun tone of each episode. They also introduce the theme of each week, so it also serves a purpose and is not completely disconnected from the rest of the episode. Then we are showing a recap from the previous episode. This recap then transitions into an overview of the theme for this week while showing some spicy moments to entice and excite you for what you're about to watch. Finally, the show plays its instrumental theme song that accompanies their short title sequence. Now we open up on a wide shot of the tent where all the contestants perform their baking, because I guess having it take place inside a building was outside of the budget? I'm only kidding, I honestly feel that the tent does an excellent job of accentuating the bright and happy tone of the series. Instead of feeling trapped inside a building like in MasterChef, we are instead in a location that allows for an enormous amount of natural lighting and provides each shot with an extra layer of depth within the frame. In relation to the music of the series, I've already mentioned the instrumental theme that sets the tone of the series. In addition, there are special different music tracks used for separate segments in an episode. We have a general theme that plays throughout most of the baking portion, then when the time is almost concluded, the music changes to a more intensive theme that puts you on the edge of your seat. Additionally, there is also a different track of music that plays during the judging process to illustrate the technical evaluating of the dishes. The final piece of music that I identified was the victory music that plays when the winner is announced in one of the challenges. Then in terms of sound effects, we sometimes hear a magical glitter sound effect, and no I'm not kidding, I did look that up, that is what it is called, and that will play when introducing a recipe that a contestant will be baking. Within the realm of graphics for the series, we don't see the show utilize lower thirds to introduce characters with their names or titles. Instead, each contestant is provided with an apron that has their name printed on the front of it, so in each shot you can easily read their name. We are also shown separate interviews with contestants throughout the episode. This allows for the baker to express their thoughts and opinions on a specific challenge or explain their concept for their bake. In terms of the language used in the show, it depends on what person is talking. The judges usually speak more formally and are using technical baking terms to illustrate their thoughts, opinions, and advice for the challenges. Meanwhile, the two hosts are much more casual with their language and do not use many technical terms. This is probably as a result of the fact that the great Canadian baking show's hosts know nothing about baking. 
the overall language of the show never reaches a point where it is inappropriate or not easily understandable. This series is uniquely open to any viewer whether you are young, old, or aren't even interested in baking. If you didn't know, The Great Canadian Baking Show has a Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. They utilize these platforms to update fans on upcoming episodes and when a new season is approaching. Specifically, they tend to use their Twitter to retweet fans' own baking creations. Their Twitter is also frequently used to promote and retweet their other shows such as The Great British Bake Off and The Great American Baking Show. On their Instagram, they have also had contestants host Q&A sessions where fans can ask recipe-related questions. Their social media channels are consistently active and also seem to enjoy posting memes and retweeting several funny posts. This aspect is nice to see as it makes the pages feel less corporate and more like they're run by real people. Whenever there is a new season releasing, they do an introduction post for each contestant on Instagram where they provide you with a small bio so you can learn a little about the baker before watching their debut. This is really smart because it's important for viewers to be familiar with the contestants as they will most likely be live tweeting about who they want to win. Therefore, providing this initial backstory on each baker is a good way to get fans started on picking their favorites. In conclusion, The Great Canadian Baking Show stands out as a unique competition-based series that focuses on each contestant's journey to improve their baking skills while also providing the audience with an entertaining and fun watch. Speaking of watch, thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you have a safe and happy holiday season.